There's a story in the Bible about a city that God had prepared for a man that he could run to when he found himself in trouble in times of great despair running from the one who sought his love there outside the city he would cry to the keeper and asked if he could enter in there he would find shelter you see
my feet Time will erase whatever we do I want my love to count for Jesus to add to worldly riches I only seek eternal gain Inside my heart there burns a question What was I planning on earth here for it truly was to build a kingdom not of my own but of the Lord's I want my life to count for Jesus for earthly things to add to worldly riches I only seek eternal gain I want my life to count for Jesus for earthly things to add to worldly riches I only seek eternal gain I'm not away from mom and dad can it really really be that bad I'm afraid and feel so all alone sleeping far away from home say a prayer and then I'll close my eyes I hope everything will be all right when the night is coming gone mom and dad will take me home I'm just a little homesick I'm just a little homesick That's what this funny feeling is I'm thinking about a place called home That's where I really want to go I'm ready now to go Mom and Dad will come, it won't be long The place where I belong, that's why I call it home I'm just a little homesick I'm older now, it's plain to see this world means so much less to me There's not a lot to make me want to stay I'm making plans to move someday My Savior's who I want to see And my loved one's there to welcome me Just a few more miles to go until I make it home I'm just a little homesick I'm just a little homesick That's what this funny feeling is I'm thinking about a place called home That's where I really want to go I'm ready now to move on my Lord will come, it 
won't be long. The place where I belong, that's why I call it home. I'm just a little homesick. The place where I belong, that's why I call it home. I'm just a little homesick. guess tonight, uh, this song's a little bit more real to me tonight, I guess, than what it was yesterday. Uh, we living in some perilous times, uh, but we were warned that they would come. He said, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Not pleasant times, but perilous times. I don't know about you, but uh, some girls just saying kind of makes me a little bit homesick. Amen. You pray for me tonight. Life has been so good, I can't complain. When I'm down, God gives me strength to rise again. But I'm weary from the struggle of it all. So I listen how I listen for His call. And heaven's sounding sweeter all the time. It seems like lately it's always on my mind. Someday I'll leave this world behind. Heavens sounding sweeter all the time. Oh, it's hard to lose a loved one to the grave. But we have the blessed hope that Jesus gave. God's going to wipe all the tears from our eyes when we meet in that land beyond the skies and heavens sounding sweeter all the time it seems like lately it's always on my mind. Someday I'll leave this world behind. And heaven's sounding sweeter all the time. Yes, heaven. Sounding sweeter all the time. Amen. When this world has let me down And it seems 
peace can't be found and my body bends beneath the toll and pain when my load is hard to bear and it seems that no one cares i'll find relief when i kneel and call his name it's all right it's all right y'all sing about that story while you're up there. Okay. sometimes forgotten when things seem to go our way but more I am finding we need reminding of just what he did on that day he suffered in agony he took that cross with humility Oh, because he loved someone like me Tell me the story How the 
how the king of all glory laid down his life for me. It's a story so precious, and oh how it blesses, I think I'd like to hear it again, tell me the story. that ever was heard tell me the story how the king of all glory laid down his life for me it's a story so precious and oh how it blesses I think I'd like to hear story, Caitlin, Ruth, and Esther, y'all come sing. Wasn't for that story, I wouldn't have hope today. <laughs> I think it's all done. I was all done and everything was a, a loss. But I know the story, amen. I read the end of the book and I know who wins, brother. I'm glad it's not over with. Hallelujah. Many, many years ago, John took his pen. Inspired by the Holy Ghost, he began to write to men that God so loved the world. He gave his only son. He proved his love to mankind for ages to come. Now the years have come and gone His words have been proclaimed After all the time that has passed They still mean the same Times have changed and men have grown More wicked every day You may wonder if the words of John Are still true today to hear what John had to say. Go proclaim his words everywhere each and every single day. To the man down the street, to the lady in the store, across this land and around the world, from shore to shore. Gave his life 
Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad God still loves the world. Wicked as she is today, he's still in love with it. Amen. That ought to do something for you right there. Wicked as this world is, God's still in love with it. Wicked as we are, God's still in love with us. He still wants to save everybody that will come his way. Believe on his son. Miss some ushers. Caitlin, come back to the piano. I don't know where you went to. Uh, Miss some ushers to come up. When you ushers get through with this offering tonight, I want you to hand it to Brother Dean. Don't bring it back up here. Give it to Brother Dean back there, okay? <clears throat> we told y'all the other night you want to get in on this. I'm sure you say, well, Preacher, I don't know what you're going to do with this offering. You'll see tonight what's going to happen with it. Uh, but, and, and you'll wish that you'd have got in on it if you didn't, if you hadn't already. And uh, I encourage you to. Uh, I encourage you to, to help out. And, and uh, let's, 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 let's get, a, get a good offering took up tonight. Okay? Uh, going to bow and ask the Lord's blessings on this offering. Going to ask God to bless the preaching. The remaining part of this service. And uh, Brother Hunter, won't you pray for us, brother? Hard to believe that it's already Wednesday night, and uh, the last night of the missions conference. And I just want to say again, before I forget, thank you so much for everything that you've done this week, uh, not only for ourselves but for the missionaries that have been here. Thank you for the good meals that you prepared for us. Thank you for the good fellowship and the time that we've had together. Thank you for the good facilities, place to stay. Y'all have been a real blessing to us as usual, and we thank the Lord for you. Amen. Thank the Lord for your pastor. Uh, Brother Billy Ray will never know this side of heaven what he's meant to me and my family, and I thank the Lord for him. Thank the Lord for Sister Angela. I uh, hate that she's not feeling well, but we'll be praying for her. And I, I thank the Lord for North Spoon Baptist Church. It has been my home away from home. And... Uh, I'm, I'm proud to say that I know North Spoon Baptist Church and it's fine people. And uh, I, I appreciate the Lord allowing our past to cross some time ago. Amen. You pray for us tonight uh, after the service. I've decided I am going to go ahead and pull out and uh, make it as far as I can up the road. Uh, I've talked to Brother Alverson's pastor and uh, they've got a nice place to stay about midways. So I'm going to try to make it to Atala, Alabama tonight, lay down for a few minutes and get up and going home tomorrow. And then on Friday morning, I get up and leave again. So um, I appreciate your prayers as we travel and uh, go through the doors that the Lord opens for us. Amen. I want to be faithful to Him and just do what He'd have me to do and do it wherever He'd have me to do it at. Amen. So I appreciate, I really appreciate your prayers. And let me say something right there. I do believe that prayers work. I am convinced that God hears the cries of His people. And um, I ask everywhere I go for people to pray for me. And, and to me now, I believe that's the most important thing you can do for us, is pray for us. If God's people are praying for us, then everything else is going to take care of itself. Um, we travel somewhere around forty to 50,000 miles each year. This year, maybe not quite that much uh, with a little bit of downtime. Uh, but I said this the other day, and it's, it's a little bit overwhelming. I've done this now for 10 years, over 10 years, uh, traveling full-time on the roads. And to God be the glory, not one time have we been involved in an accident. I pass them all the time, some bad ones. But by the protecting hand of God, it's not been us. And I give, I give God the credit, but I give God's people the credit for praying for us. God hears your prayers, and I'm thankful that you pray to keep us safe. And I've only been, only been broke down one time out of a little over 10 years. Only been stranded on the side of the road one time. I thought that's pretty good. Amen. Yeah. It may not seem like much to you, but... Uh, uh, next time you on the side of the road a long ways from home, let's see what you feel like. Amen. 
I'm glad it's only happened one time. We broke down several times, but it seems like every time it happens, we're at the house. I can handle that. I can call somebody to come get me. Amen? A little bit difficult when you're 300 miles away from home, but um, I appreciate you praying for us. Well, I trust that you've been praying over your faith promise cards, and I hope that um, you've listened to the Lord, and I hope that you've asked Him what He wanted you to give specifically. And if you asked Him, I'm, I'm believing He told you. I really believe He will. He wants to use you. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, don't let this make you nervous, but I, I hope he told you something you wasn't expecting. Why would you do that to us, preacher? Well, I want you to trust the Lord. He wants you to trust the Lord. Now, some of you that's been involved in missions for quite some time, I'm hoping that your faith has grown since we started these meetings. And if your faith has grown, if your faith has increased, then I know what's happening to your giving. Your giving has increased. Because the more you learn to trust the Lord, the more God's going to trust you with, and the more the Lord's going to give through you. So uh, I hope that it's a figure. I'm not being mean to you now, but I, I hope it's a figure that you have to trust the Lord for it. I, have, I hope you have to pray about it. I'm talking about after tonight. You make your commitment tonight, I hope you have to pray about it and say, Lord, please send that in. And then I'm excited to see how God's going to send it in. Sometimes it'll be in ways you least expect it. And it might be at the last moment, but God will always, always come through. Amen. You see, He wants the world reached with the gospel more than you do. And He knows that it's going to take some finances to fund it. And He's going to use people like me and you to do it. Amen. So I'm, I'm a trusting that you've prayed. I'm trusting that the Lord... I spoke to you. If not, then maybe he will tonight and you'll get that settled in just a little while. Uh, before the service closes, we'll take up those faith promise cards and uh, Brother Billy Ray and the church will have a little bit of an ideal of what to expect in the upcoming year as far as what's going to be coming in for missions. Uh, helps to budget a little bit on uh, the missionaries that you can have come through and the offerings maybe that you can give and then Maybe more missionaries that you can support and then those that are already a part of North Spoon Baptist Church, you might be able to help them more as a sending church. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a hoping that uh, the Lord does some great things here through your Faith Promise Missions program. Listen, just because you're small in number does not mean that you're limited as to what God can do through you. Now, I'm saying this to every bit be the glory to God I was in a meeting not too long ago. We closed out a Faith Promise Missions Conference and a church no bigger than this one. I'm saying this to God's glory. A church no bigger than this one was already given about 70 some thousand dollars a year to missions. When we done the Faith Promise Conference this year, they took up the cards. At the end of the meeting, it went up over $40,000 and they're doing about 117000 dollars a year in missions a church no bigger than this I asked the preacher I said you got some people with money he said if they have it I don't know about it he said I've got a God though that's got access to it all amen so listen uh, just because you're small in number now don't mean that you're limited when you're hooked up with the right resources so I'm going to trust in the Lord to do great things with you here at North Spoon Baptist Church. Have your Bibles tonight. Turn with us, if you would. Book of Romans chapter number 10 tonight. Romans chapter number 10. And uh, while you're saying, I sure have enjoyed the Alverson family. What about you? They are blessing. Listen, I've spent a lot of time with them, not only this week, but I've spent a lot of time with them prior to this week. And I'll go ahead and say it in front of them. They're real. And, and I appreciate them. And they really have a heart for Scotland. They have, a, they have a heart for God's people and they have a heart for the church. They have a heart for sinners, but they really have a heart for Scotland. That's where God's called them. That's where they want to be. I, I believe even them girls are wanting to go to Scotland. Amen. So I thank the Lord for getting to be with them this week. Aren't they a blessing in singing? 
Uh, I've got good news. You can take some of that home with you if you want to, preacher. I guess it'd be all right if I announced this, but uh, just this afternoon through the mail, uh, they got some CDs in, hot off the press. And um, they are available. And um, you see them after church, and you can get you one of them CDs. And I'd give you something good to listen to. Amen. Amen. Turn Fox News off a little while and put in some good singing. Amen. I come in here about half defeated tonight. I don't know if you did or not. And then I got sitting there feeling guilty. Lord, help us. Uh, God's still on the throne, no matter who's the president. Amen. And there's a job to do, and grace is always going to be sufficient. I, I don't know why we get so easily defeated, but I, I do. I, I have been. Uh, but God's still good, and He's got a plan. It's all going to work out. And as them girls saying, it's all right. Amen. And I'm glad that it is. Romans chapter number 10. If you can enable, why don't we stand together for a few minutes tonight as we read our text together. Romans chapter number 10, some very familiar scripture. Actually, some of my favorite scripture. Romans chapter number 10. I'm going to begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Father, we love you tonight. We're so grateful, Lord, for all that you've done. Lord, in our hearts and in our midst, in these services this week, thank you, Lord, for Brother Billy Ray and Sister Angela. Thank you for the church. Thank you, Lord, for the good hospitality. Lord, the friendship, the fellowship, God, that we enjoy with these people, we thank you for it. Lord, I thank you for their heart to do something for God. And Lord, I'm praying tonight as we come to the closing of the meeting, we're praying and asking you, Lord, that you would uh, speak to us and help us just one more time, God, before we go our separate ways. Lord, I'm trusting that each one has called upon you. Lord, sought your will for what you would have them to do, specifically, Lord, in their endeavors to reach the gospel with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I trust that you've revealed to each one, Lord, what you want them to do. And now, Lord, I pray, God, that they'll follow you, they'll trust you, and do, Lord, what you've bidden them to do. Lord, I ask you, Lord, if you would, God, tonight just touch me and anoint me. Lord, give me liberty to preach this evening. And then, Lord, watch over as we go our separate ways here in a little while. And whatever's done and whatever's accomplished, we'll... Be very careful to thank you for it. We'll praise you and give you the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Again, looking at some familiar scripture here in Romans chapter number 10. One of my favorite verses is verse number 
13. Whosoever. I like that word, whosoever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Y'all believe that's true? You, you still believe that we've got a whosoever will God? I believe with all of my heart that anybody can be saved. I do not believe that some are chosen and some are not chosen. I do not believe that some are destined to heaven and some are destined to hell. The Bible is clear. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But then verse number 14 asks a question. It said, how shall they call upon him and whom they have uh, not believed? And how shall they believe in him and whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Lots of times we'll quote that verse and we'll stop there at the end of that statement where it said, how shall they hear without a preacher? But I don't want to stop there. I want to continue on. The next question is asked is in verse number 15 and it said, and how shall they preach except they be sent? How shall they preach except they be sent? That's what I'm interested in tonight for just a little while is verse number 15 and that question that is asked, how shall they preach except they be sent? What I see here in the text is a ministry within itself. We know that preaching is a ministry. I have a ministry of preaching. But on top of the ministry of preaching, I see another ministry in the text, and that is that of sending. So here's my thought for a little while this evening. I want to preach on serving as senders. Serving as senders. It's one thing to be a preacher, but it's another thing to be a sender. And if we keep things in its context, watch this now, church. One is no more important than the other. I, I put an emphasis on preaching. Do y'all do that? I know your pastor does. We have meetings here quite often and some of the best singing, some of the best singers, some of the best groups have been here and sing here and I thank God for them, don't you? I hate to have a meeting without some good singing. Amen. But I've heard your pastor say it over and over how he appreciates the good singing, but he puts more of an emphasis on the preaching. And that's right. We, we, we believe in preaching. For the Bible said it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them which believe. So we put an emphasis on preaching. It is highly important. But if we look at our text here tonight in Romans chapter number 10, if preaching is essential, if preaching is important, then sending must be essential and important as well. For he asked the question, how shall they preach except they be sent? Somebody has got to send the preachers. Amen. I want to think about that for just a little while and I want to ask you a question. What is your ministry? What is your job, if you will? Do you have a ministry around North Spoon Baptist Church? Now, I will say this and I kindly hit on it a little bit last night. Sometimes we have too many irons in the fire and I still make that statement and agree with it, but I believe it's okay to have more than one ministry. Amen. You've probably got a primary ministry, but it's okay to have some kind of secondary ministry. But make sure you keep things in perspective. But I'm preaching to somebody tonight that probably would think that they really don't have a ministry of their own. They don't have a task. They don't have a job. They don't have something special that they enjoy. I want to ask you to consider something tonight. Why don't you consider serving as a sender? Amen. I think that would be a tremendous ministry for somebody to take serious and get involved in. I believe it to an extent, Brother Mark, we all can be involved in it. What do y'all think? In North Spoon Baptist Church, every member here ought to be involved in the sending of the preachers. Amen. But some of you might be able to focus on that a little more and let that be your ministry. I don't think there's a thing wrong with that. 
It means somebody needs to focus on it a little more. Somebody needs to spend a little more time with it. Somebody needs to put some more effort toward that and serve as a sender. Let me give you about four things real quickly tonight and then we'll be done. First of all, I noticed in our text the sender's importance. There is a biblical priority put on that ministry of serving as a sender because he plainly said how? shall they preach except they be sent. There is a biblical priority. There is a biblical emphasis put on that sending. Now you may not have noticed that or thought about it before, but I believe it's a vital, important part of what's going on in the work of God today. We've got to have some senders. Amen. It is a biblical priority. But now I want to give you a little warning. If you're going to get involved as a sender, I want you to know up front, there's no glory in it. Is that okay? You're probably not going to get any attention. You may not even get recognized. They're not probably not going to present you a plaque and it says that it honors you for 20 years of sending. That's probably not going to happen because basically if you serve as a sender, it's going to be a background position. Amen. But I want to say this tonight, that's all right. We've got too many looking to be out in the forefront. We've got too many looking for something that will draw attention to themselves. But I'm telling you, friend, if you want to give God all the glory, if you want to get God all the credit, then find you a background position and be satisfied of serving in the background. Amen. Listen, nobody may pat you on the back, but I've already told you, God keeps real good records. Guess what, church? He knows who's been scrubbing the toilets around here. Amen. He knows who comes by and mops the floor and vacuums the floor when nobody else is around. God knows everything that goes on, and he keeps real good records. Amen. And I'm going to be honest with you tonight. I believe there's some... That that serve in the background that's on a higher level than a lot of these that's got their names on the signs, amen, and making a big fuss uh, for, uh, for the cause of Christ. God rewards on faithfulness and who's doing it for the right reason. And then I've been doing a study and I'm wanting to preach on it when I get it all together. But go through the Bible and start looking at those that served in the background. There's folk done great things for the cause of Christ, for the glory of God, but we have no idea what their name is. Amen. And that's all right. I'm not interested in anybody knowing my name or seeing me. I just want God to get the glory. Amen. And that ought to be our attitude with anything that we're doing for the cause of Christ. Let God get all the glory. Amen. There's a biblical priority, but it's a background position. But let me say this, if you're going to serve as a sender, this is a burden and problem. It's not an easy ministry. If you're going to take it serious, it won't be an easy ministry. Not many people's doing it, but it sure would be good if we had some folk in our churches that would get serious about this sending ministry. Amen. And take it to heart. And if you're going to do any time of any kind of ministry, especially in this day and time, it's going to come with its burdens. It's going to come with its problems. Can I say something tonight? And I believe you're going to agree with me. If you're doing something for the, for the cause of Christ or for the church, and, and it's no problem and it's no burden involved, I'm not going to burst your bubble, but you ain't doing much. Amen. If it's, if it's at least not causing a little bit of inconvenience on you, you ain't doing much. But see, that's the problem. We, we want heaven. We want all that he's got to offer with little to no burden in this thing. Amen. We try to court Christ with bubble gum rings. Somebody say amen right there. We don't want to put nothing into this. I'm telling you, if you're going to serve as a sender and if you do it right, it's going to bring a burden upon you. That's okay. We need a good burden to carry for the glory of God. Amen. 
give it your heart. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to help you do it, okay? There's a biblical priority, but it's a background position. There's a burden and problem involved. But let me say, if you'll serve as a sinner, you'll be a blessed participant. Amen. I'm telling you, 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 only God knows what's going to happen when we get to the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And I don't know, you may never visit a foreign land. You may not exit out of the state of Mississippi. You may not even leave this county. But if you'll be serious about what God would let you do and serve as a sender, hey, when reward day comes, you'll be glad you did. I believe God will bless you for it. Amen. So I, I thought about the fact that there's an importance when it comes to this ministry of sending. So I saw the sender's importance, but let me mention this one real quickly, and here's why I want to help you. Uh, the sender's involvement. How can you serve as a sender? If that's going to be your ministry, you ought to do it the best way possible. Matter of fact, you ought to give it all your heart. I want to ask you a question right here, and I believe I'm safe in asking this. Do you think your pastor does what he does half-heartedly? I see a couple of heads shaking, but surely you don't think he does what he does half-heartedly. I can tell myself, he puts everything he's got into it. Amen. Well, to be honest with you, I wouldn't care too much about somebody that just done what they did for the Lord half-heartedly. Would you? I ain't got much confidence. See, that's the way a lot of us trying to been getting by for a long time. Anyhow, we just kind of do what we do half-heartedly. We've got Sunday school teachers that's just half-heartedly teaching their class. Y'all know that's right. I'm not trying to hurt you or kick you. But I'm saying whatever you do, y'all to, to put everything you got into it. Well, if you would look, as God's going to allow you to serve as a sender, then y'all to put everything you've got into it. Say, preacher, how can I? Let, let me give you a few things right here just to think about that might be a help to you. If you really get serious and you want to serve as a sender, first of all, this one's obvious now, they need monetary support. Right? They need money. They need finances. And if you'll serve as a sender and do it right and do it with everything you've got, then I'm going to go ahead and say it. Y'all put some money into it. Amen. Every time the mission offering plate comes by, you ought to give it everything you've got and put what you can in there, at least what God told you to put in there. Amen. They need that monetary support. And then from time to time, hey, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be nothing but a blessing if you didn't drop a little extra in. Y'all okay? Why don't you try to be a blessing to your missionaries even when they didn't come by your church. What's, what's wrong with dropping a little thinking of you card with a $20 Cracker Barrel card? Somebody say amen right there. Amen. I'm talking about just a little something extra every now and then. I'm talking about serving as a sender and giving it everything you got. Wanting to be the best sender that you can possibly be. If you want to be, then there, there needs to be some monetary support. But not only are they in need of monetary support, there needs to be some moral support. Amen. You know what would be a real good ministry? Sister Opal, I hope she's watching. Uh, but from what I understand, it's Sister Opal that drops the cards in the mail, the birthday cards and things. Is that right? She dropped. You're talking about a blessing. Just to know that somebody's thought of you, somebody took the time to fill out a card, somebody put a stamp on that, somebody put it in the mail, and that's a blessing within itself. Why don't you take it upon yourself, and from time to time, it don't even have to be their birthday, it don't have to be their anniversary. Why don't you drop a letter in the mail to one of them? Why don't you pick up a phone and call one of them? And if most everybody's on Facebook now, why don't you get on there and message one of them out of the blue when they're on the field? Just let them know. Say, I'm thinking about you. I just got through praying for you. I called your name and your family out to God. I wanted to check in and see if y'all are doing well. I'd like to know if you got any specific needs that I could help you pray. I'm talking about some moral support. You'd be surprised how many missionaries 
stay on the field and never do hear from anybody. Some of them even their home church. They're needing some moral support. And you could do that serving as a sender. You don't have to bring it up in the next business meeting. We don't have to get a vote on it. You don't even have to bother your pastor. If God put it on your heart to do something to be an encouragement to one of your missionaries, go ahead and do it. Let that be a ministry and serve as a sender. There's all kinds of ways you can be an encouragement to a missionary, a missionary's wife, a missionary's child, several things. Why don't you... Take your Sunday school class. Let your Sunday school class send a letter, send cards to a, another missionary's kid somewhere. I'm talking about just moral support. You want to do it? Do it right and be a good sender. Amen? Put your heart into it. Find ways. Talk to missionaries. Say, what would be a blessing to you while you're on the field? What, what could a church do? What could an individual do? That could be an encouragement to you. You'd be surprised. Most of them just say, call every now and then. Check in every now and then. Send a line every now and then. That would be a real blessing. I'm, I'll never forget it. As long as I live, Brother Moore and I, been several years ago now, we was making, I believe it was my first Western Swing. We was going out west to visit some missionaries out west and we had visited, I think, seven different missionaries in five different states out west and we was making our way back home. We had meetings to get to back home so we was on a time schedule. And as we were pass passing through South Dakota, uh, there was a missionary heard that we was coming through their area. And they called us up on the phone and said, I heard that y'all was in our area. Would there be any chance y'all could stop by and see us? Reluctantly, regretfully, we had to tell that dear missionary's wife, it's the missionary's wife that called us. We had to tell her, no, we won't be able to this time. We would love to, but we're not going to be able to stop by this time. We're headed somewhere else. There was a long pause on the other line. And then we could tell that she began to cry. And she said, Preacher, you don't know what it would do for us if we could just see a familiar face. Moral support could go a long, long ways. That dear missionary's wife's in heaven tonight. Give anything if we could have swung by just for a visit. Instead of taking a vacation one year, why don't you take your mission trip and go spend a little time with a missionary? You say, preacher, that's boring. <laughs> Who knows what you could do if you'd put your heart into serving as a sender? Amen. They need monetary support. They need moral support. There's all kinds of ways that you can serve. But they... They need ministry support. Do you know that there's missionaries on the field that could use Bibles? They could use gospel tracts? There's all kinds of things going on. Find out what they are in need of and see how you can assist them in their ministry. Find out ways you might could... You, you might could start a little project on the behalf of a ministry somewhere, a missionary somewhere, and help them in their ministry. Partnership goes beyond just the finances. They need somebody serving as a sender. If God would let you do that, why don't you do it with all your heart? Give it everything you got and be the best sender that you can possibly be. I saw, I saw the sender's importance I see the sender's involvement. Let me mention this one briefly. Then I thought about the sender's investment. You'll never go wrong investing in missions. I told you about Oswald Smith earlier this week. I've been listening and reading a bunch of his writings and his work. Again, he was an old Presbyterian preacher, but man, he had a heart for missions. He promoted missions greatly. Oswald Smith made a statement and it kind of caught me off guard when he said it. 
he, he, he said it this way, preacher. He said, I've got thousands in the bank. And he paused. He said, in the bank of heaven. My, that, that caught me off guard a little bit. I thought, I wonder how much I've laid up. I wonder how much I have invested in the next world. I wonder if I've got an account on the other side and I wonder if there's anything in it. If you want to invest, if you want to have something in the next world, invest it in missions and you'll never, you'll never go wrong. Brother Giddens, y'all know he done that financial, I don't know if everybody's seen it or not, he done that financial class and, and right after he done the class, Brother Alverson and I, that's when I preached his missions conference and so we got to fellowship quite a bit. And he got to talking a little bit about finances. And he got to talking about retirement. And I realized if the Lord don't come back real soon, I'm in trouble. Is that okay to say? I don't have much of a retirement plan. I've not made many wise investments, if you will. I reckon I've always had it in my mind, Brother Philip, Jesus is coming. I ain't going to be here that long. Well, they've been a lot more thought the same thing, and Jesus still hadn't came. And I thought, well, if Jesus don't come, I'm going to run myself in the grave pretty quick, and I still won't have to worry about it. There have been others that thought that too. So I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a little bit concerned about my retirement. I said all that to say this. It's one thing to be concerned about our earthly retirement, our earthly investments, but it's high time we start getting concerned about our heavenly investments, our heavenly retirement. I want something to show when I get there. Some of us, I've heard the old saying, if I can just get in by the skin of my teeth, I'll be all right. You'll regret that one day. You'll regret that. The old songwriter said, just build me a cabin over in the corner of glory. If y'all sing that, I start to say I'm sorry, but I ain't even sorry. I'm not satisfied with just a cabin in the corner of glory. Listen here, church. God's been too good to us just to want to get in and be satisfied with that. I'm telling you, Calvary ought to be enough to motivate us beyond salvation to do everything we can for the cause of Christ and the glory of God. A good investment would be to lay aside some riches in the bank of heaven. Lay up some treasures on the other side where moth and rust doeth not corrupt. Have you got anything laid up? Have you been putting anything? We say putting it back. Have you been putting anything up? I hope you have. Real good investment for anybody at any age. Go ahead and start investing in a good missionary family somewhere. Partner with them. And the more you put in them, the more you're going to get out of it. Amen. He that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. But he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. It's investment. It's an investment. It's a partnership. It's an investment. Let me move on. The sender's importance, the sender's involvement, the sender's investment. And please don't take this next one wrong, but hear me out, okay? Then I thought about the sender's ignorance. That's a bad word to use, but for alliteration's sake, it worked. But do you know what ignorance is? Now, it's not a bad word. You young people listen, that's not a bad word. It simply means a lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge. What's going to hinder anybody from being a good sender is a lack of knowledge. If you want to be a good sinner, let me help you right here now. Learn all you can about missions and your missionaries. Y'all support 41 missionaries. Now, I'm putting you on the spot, and I think I know the answer, but could you name, 
Could you name half of them? Some of you probably can. I think Brother Dean does the checks. He's got them memorized. Amen. But outside of that, some of you don't know who you support. I'm not trying to be critical. I'm really wanting to help you right here. If you want to be a good sender, learn who you're supporting. Find out their names. Don't not just recognize a prayer card. Find out their names. Oh, we support the Alverson family. Well, what's Brother Alverson's name? Oh, we just know him as the Alverson family. Lack of knowledge. Find out their names. What's the girls' names? What's his wife's name? You want to be a good sender? Or are they just another letter on the wall? I, I, please don't take me wrong if you're taking me wrong. I'm sorry, but I, I'm honestly just trying to help you learn about them. If you want to be a good sending church. Now listen, when I say a sending church, y'all got, ch got missionaries going out of this church. You are literally the sending church. Right? But you are also part of a sending church to 41 Families, well, included in that's those that are actually out of this church. You're, you're sending church. You're now helping send the Alverson family to Scotland. So, yes, you know about your missionaries out of your church, but those others that you support, learn about them as well if you want to be a good sender. Now, if you're not interested in being a good sender, just don't even worry about it, okay? Just let it be another letter on the wall. But learn about them. And if they, come, if they ever get to come back through here again, it's a real encouragement and a real blessing if you can call them by name. I'm going to be honest with you. Here's just a little story on my part. I've showed up in churches before. That church supported me, and they didn't have a clue who I was. Who are you? Are you just by visiting? Yeah, I'm just by visiting, I guess. They didn't know. I said, I'm one of you missionaries. Oh, Really? Maybe they hadn't been there long, and that's okay. I mean, y'all don't know them. If they ever come back by again, it's an encouragement if you could call them by their names. And not only study them and learning who they are and their names, I want to help you right here. Get those prayer letters and read them. Read them. How are you going to know what they're dealing with? How are you going to know what they need if you don't never read a prayer letter? I've got a pet peeve right here, and it may sound ugly, but I'm not trying to be ugly. But I'm going to throw this out here, and you can do with it whatever you want to. We have a lot of churches that will drop a missionary for not sending prayer letters. They will. And that's a pet peeve of mine both ways. I'll look at a missionary and say, the least you can do is send a prayer letter to your supporting churches. Now sometimes, especially during COVID, preacher, there was missionaries that were saying, I don't have nothing to report. I can understand that. It's hard to sit down and write a letter when there ain't nothing going on. But I tell our missionaries, if you ain't got nothing to say, just sit down and say, I'm still here. I'm still doing all I can. In spite of what's going on around me, I'm still here. If that's all you can say, at least send that to them. That's a pet peeve of mine. But on the other side of that, we've got churches that's dropping missionaries because they're not faithful in sending their prayer letters. I want to say this. You better never drop a missionary for not sending a prayer letter if you never read them. Is that okay? What's the use of them sending them if they're just going to lay in the envelope unopened and never get read by anybody? Read them prayer. I hope I ain't too harsh on y'all, but if you want to be a good sender, I'm just trying to help you. Read them prayer letters and find out what's going on with your investment. If it was a stock market that you'd invested in, I guarantee you'd check Wall Street every now and then. Well, you're investing in some missionary families. You ought to check and see what's going on with the investment from time to time. Find out how you can be a help to them, how you can be a blessing to them, how you can minister to them. They'll mention it from time to time in their prayer letters. Now, some of them's more modest than others, and some of them won't never ask for help. 
I think maybe some of them ask for too much help. I don't know where the balance is, but from time to time, there's going to be needs arise, and it's probably going to be in a prayer letter from time to time. And if you can't help financially, if you can't help physically with that need, at least you can do is pray for them and pray about that need. Amen. It's going to hinder you from being a good sender if you don't read them prayer letters. Read them. I know it takes a little time, especially if you got 41. Take a little time, but you don't have to read them all. Pick you out two or three and really get involved with two or three if, if that's all you can do. But, but do all you can. Learn all you can. Find out, hey, they may have family back home that's struggling. You, you might say, is there some way I can be a blessing to your family while you're on the field? Man, you talking about some encouragement. Mamas, daddies and mamas and papas have been left back and a lot of times they get sick and they get frail while that family's on the field and they've got nobody back home. Maybe they're a long ways away. At least you might send them... You might could send a family member a get well card and let them know, hey, we're, we support your son over on the field. We just want to let you know we're praying for you too. I, I believe that encouraged the missionary. What do y'all think? Find ways. Learn all that you can and be a good, be a good sender. If that's going to be your ministry, give it everything that you've got and be a good sender. Learn all you can. Ignorance, I don't like the word, but it, it works. It's going to hinder you from being a good sender. Find out their needs. Find out the necessities. And do all you can to help them with it. And then I thought about this, and I'm done. Then I thought about the sender's intercession. Have you a time to pray for them? You want to be a good sender? That money's a blessing, but that money can only go so far. Prayers can do what money can't. And I'd give anything if you would just take some time out of your busy schedule, get you a prayer card, and take to your prayer closet with you. I preached this in another message on praying for missionaries, but I want to I reiterate it right here. Nowhere in the Bible do I find you have to pray with your eyes closed. I don't think it is. Take a prayer card with you to your prayer altar. Might ought to hit this. I hope you have a prayer altar. It's hard to ask people to pray for missionaries when they ain't praying, period. I hope you've got, I hope you've got a prayer out. I hope you pray some. I hope you've got a place to pray. If you do, take your prayer card with you from time to time. I know you've got a lot of other cares and worries to pray about. But take just a few moments. You don't have to take more than one, just one at a time be all right. But take your prayer card, and with your eyes open, look at them. And call their names out to God. Find the wife's name. Find the children's name. And call that family out to God. And spend a little time praying for your missionaries. You want to be a good sender? Then give it everything you got. I want to be a good preacher. Not for my glory. But he's been too good for me not to be. So I'm going to give it everything I got. Amen. If you would allow your ministry to be sending, then you ought to do just like any other ministry and give it everything that you've got. How shall they hear without a preacher? But how shall they preach except they be sent? Serve as a sender and be the best sender that your missionaries have. No tell them what God can do. You ought to be involved in all 41 of your missionaries. You ought to be involved in some way. I'm going to step out right here. I can say this at North Spoon because y'all got some. 
at least do it for your own missionaries out of this church. If their home church ain't going to be a good sender, then who is? Be a good sender. It's as vitally as important as them going. Is somebody sending heads bowed, eyes closed. Serve as a sender. I don't know your heart tonight. Can, can I just ask you, and I, it's a missions conference, so it's all right. How much involved have you been in the mission program at your church? I'm including financially. You reckon you could get a little bit more involved? Not just give more, but maybe you give more time. Maybe you could pray a little more. Maybe, maybe you could be a little more concerned about your missionaries than what you have been. Think about this. and These two families can testify from experience, or more families in here can testify from experience. But especially on the field, it can be a tough place. And if you got somebody back home, though, helping you out a little bit, it may not fix everything, but it sure would make it a little easier. Have somebody in the background that you know that, you're, that you can count on and they're with you. Can they count on you? Are you really with them? Do they ever hear from you? If you're a good sender, they do. If you're a good sender, they do. Let's all stand. Something's done came. Do you know how much the Lord's wanting you to give? If you're not settled yet, now be a real good time. Come to this altar one more time. Say, Lord, show me. Speak to me, Lord. Reveal to me exactly what, how much you want me to give. How much can I trust you with, Lord? Or how much can you trust me with? How much, Lord, will you give through me to the missions program here at North Spoon? Show me, Lord, and I'll do everything I can to trust you and expect you to lead it, send it through me. Do you know? If you don't, now it's time to ask. Now it's time to ask. Now it's time to ask. You might say, I thought I know. Make sure. Make sure. Make sure. Make sure. Serving as sinners.